from the Smart Mobility Summit 2019. Over 3,000 people gathered in Tel Aviv these days. And here, behind the scenes of the summit, GoTo, as a part of the Ecomotion community, is interviewing selected mobility experts. Here with me, my name is Katya Rosenauer, and here with me is Yaakov Sharabani, the CEO of a company named Adaskai. Hi, Yaakov. Hello, Katya. How are Great you? Great to have you here. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Honor. Uh, Yaakov, before we begin, I'd really like to uh, ask you a couple of very short questions. I'll ask fast, and please answer fast as well. So, bike or car? Sorry? Bike or car? Of course, car. Train or plane? Plane. I'm a pilot, by the way. Oh. <laughs> <In> my background. <laughs> wow. Swimming or running? Running. Car sharing or taxi? Taxi. For the meanwhile. <laughs> iPhone or Android? Android. Amazon or AliExpress? Amazon. Elevator or stairs? Stairs. So many people take stairs, so which of floor? Of course, it keeps us in good shape, you know. <laughs> which floor highest, are you located the high, on? The highest, the better. <laughs> Yaakov, uh, I'd like to know what uh, your company is uh, doing. I understand you even have a prototype here, so uh, how about you tell me uh, yeah. about it? Uh, well, thank you for the opportunity, uh, Katya. Adaskai is introducing a unique technology based on a thermal imaging. It's a high-resolution uh, sensor that uh, we design it end-to-end, uh, -end, both the hardware and the software. We do also the AI in the company. And uh, at the end, uh, our sensor uh, will be able to solve the most difficult challenges that currently the, the industry is facing i.e. dealing with harsh weather, uh, very tough lighting condition like blurring, uh, fog, nighttime, etc. and uh, urban areas. And um, uh, Other Sky was established about three and a half years ago. Uh, we currently have, uh, um, we are in quite advanced stage where we have our samples and our prototypes uh, shared, I would say, with most of the leading OEMs and tier ones. Uh, they are being evaluated, in some cases integrated, and uh, the feedback is very, very strong. Is it? I want to understand. So I know sensors, uh, radars, I know lidars, and this is some new creature that you've uh, invented? It's, uh, it's not a new creature because the uh, thermal imaging uh, technology is up there and it is there and it is being improved in the last uh, three decades. It is the, I would say this is the prime technology in the defense establishment. You will find it in many airplanes and many uh, uh, other uh, military applications. We take this technology, we uh, innovate the technology so that it will fit a 24-7 uh, sensing technology for the automotive market uh, and a very uh, cost-effective solution, which basically enable the car manufacturers, the OEMs, to uh, deal with this disruptive technology and to be able to solve the most difficult scenarios that they are currently facing. So, could you walk me through such a scenario, please? Of like course. when uh, I want to hear a story where lidar, lidar fails, radar fails, and uh, your sensor actually works. Um, uh, thank you for the question, because this is a question that we are being asked, and actually we are being evaluated by those OEMs and car manufacturers. Because I would say, uh, before I get to the example, that what we are witnessing is that uh, the current technologies, the common technologies that uh, OEMs uh, dealt in the last few years uh, didn't solve those uh, unique situations. For example, if you take foggy night, night time when you have fog, now you want this level four car to drive during uh, fog, in fog. Because of the physics of the other modalities, it's very difficult for them to detect and to classify objects in foggy environments. If you take heavy rain, for, for instance, if you take uh, a quick change of lighting condition, because our technology uh, is dealing with uh, uh, the thermal temperature, the temperature that is coming from the objects, it enables, uh, it is very uh, transparent to change of lighting condition. 
Now, to give you some examples why we think that our technology is very, uh, will, be, uh, will be there and will make the difference, especially if you look at the last accidents that happened in this uh, race for autonomous driving, we were able to uh, reconstruct those. Uh, 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 Which ones are you referring to? The referring Uber accident or uh, the all, Google all, accident? All of or, the above. Actually, okay. when you take those accidents that happens in tough scenarios like sunrise, for example, or nighttime, and a pedestrian that is walking with a bicycle next to him, which make for other technologies a challenge to detect that this is a, a, a pedestrian. So that's the Uber accident, well, is, if I, I, I remember I don't want to correctly. refer to a specific okay, accident, uh, but just to, to tell you that when we see this, uh, uh, when I see the, when I'm witnessing the, the race for autonomous driving, the issue of safety and the need to deal with those uh, um, scenarios in a very uh, robust uh, way start with sensing technology that is reliable. Now this technology in other, in vertical markets is very uh, advanced and it is, is offering autonomous flights for example. Mm -hmm. So and it's already used in uh, aviation yeah. you're saying, for example, right? Yeah, and that's why we think that this technology can definitely uh, be uh, enabler to uh, impact and to offer level four, level five, even level three. So that's where we currently are. And the beauty is that at the end, this is the sensor, by the way, we design it end to end, both the hardware uh, from the lens up to the electronics and uh, with the unique IP that we have embedded inside in the brain, I would say in the image processing of this uh, sensor. And uh, so with both hardware, software, we are very lucky with a very uh, strong engineering team of uh, over 50 engineers in our company and uh, very devoted and at the end enable this passive technology, this uh, very small and tiny solution which does not need any calibration, it's not an active technology, it's like daytime What's camera. What's the difference between passive and active technology? Passive I don't technology understand. is a uh, technology that observes the information from the, from this, from the uh, scene that it is looking at. Like mm -hmm. daytime camera, daytime camera is a passive technology because it looks and it gets the information from the... Okay. From, uh, the LIDAR uh, sends the signal. Is that uh, so other active? technologies like radar and LIDAR, they need to... Uh, they need to... Uh, um, uh, to be very active in, in the way that they need to send a beam and right, to collect right, it I back, got, et cetera. I got you. And that offers a significant challenge and it also makes the solution more uh, complex and more expensive. And the beauty is that this technology it becomes very, very cheap and cost effective. Okay, a question, how is that thing different from what we have installed already in the planes? Why me being, I don't know, OEM or uh, an autonomous uh, car uh, manufacturer, it just take what's in the plane and put it on my car? What's the difference? It's what was the work that you guys actually did? Okay, thank you for the question. So from day one, Ada Sky is focusing on the automotive market. And we basically took the, I would say, the uh, previous generation of solution that is, as you said, introduced in other vertical markets. And on top of that, we designed our unique uh, and dedicated ISP, dedicated ISP chip. ISP is what? Chip. Okay. This is our unique chip. We collaborate with ST Microelectronics. Uh, and uh, together, uh, we were able to introduce a very strong uh, chip that improve significantly both the image processing and the uh, uh, other um, challenges that this technology had. For example, if you look at this technology, it's not just that it is, this solution is not just a passive solution, there are no moving parts in our technology. Unlike other, te other solutions that you will find in the aviation market or, or in other, uh, that they currently have mechanical parts, the fact that we don't have any moving parts, we were able, our smart engineers were able to solve this by algorithms mm -hmm. and to find a unique phenomena and to solve that only by algorithms, basically, on the one hand, improve the performance, improve the sharpness of the image, and on the other hand, make it cheaper because there are no moving parts. So it's only a chip. 
Is it probably smaller as well or not? Of course. This is the smallest <laughs> sensor that you will find. Oh, what's the, the size market? of this thing in the plane? Oh, like we're talking about this oh, big yeah. of a tool yeah, yeah, yeah. or what? Uh, if you look at the, uh, revolution, uh, the evolution of the thermal imaging sensors, uh, back, it's, I would say, you can definitely compare that to the daytime cameras. If you remember 20, 30 years ago, a daytime camera was very big, very expensive, and, and a very low performance. So that's the thing that like this big yeah. thing and, like, and, in the and corner of a room or whatever example, building, that, that's the one you're referring to? Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, currently you can find daytime camera in our mo mobile phone, very tiny camera, very cheap and very good performance. Same with the thermal imaging technology. 20 years ago, this technology was not there. It was low performance, very expensive, and I'm very proud that our company is leading this uh, trend that this solution on the one hand becomes very cheap, and on the other hand, the performance is very, very uh, strong. Is it patented? It is, yeah, of course. Sure, it sounds like we, it we, should We be. must uh, protect our IP, and it is, of Good course. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, tell me, is there like a tiny thermometer built into this? How does, yeah. I mean, what's the, what the work yeah, that, now, that now this you, thing Now you're does. challenging <laughs> me because you want me to take three and a half years of 50 engineers and to make it in one sentence. Right. And, yes, I, and, yeah. and I would say what they are doing for, for those three years, those engineers, is uh, um, working very hard in order to be able in every scenario, fog, heavy rain, snow, uh, nighttime, daytime, sunrise, sunset, etc., to be able to maximize the image quality that this uh, sensor provide to the uh, computer of the car so that you will be able to uh, uh, make a better detection in a longer range. So with this thing, I can tell apart a bicycle and a person walking yes. behind the bicycle. And this helps me to uh, understand that there's like a hazard uh, of human and like a risk of a human, uh, how do you say it? Yeah. What's the polite way to say it? Uh, <laughs> human uh, damage or? Uh, uh, it, uh, it, I would say a human casualties. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, 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 basically, we we have uh, uh, we classify dif and we differentiate between trucks and buses, between cars and motorcycles, between uh, bis motorcycle bicycles and pedestrians and animals. So for each one of those, it's not that we just detect them. We can classify and tell you or tell the computer of the car, hey, this is a motorcycle or this is a pedestrian and it will impact also the speed of the collision, the time to collision and what you, uh, what the car must do in order to prevent uh, an accident. So basically the interpretation is done on your side, not like you're not sending me a raw image, but you're also telling me what this image is. And like if I'm very cautious, I maybe want to double check that or I maybe want to trust you. Is so, that so, so we, uh, um, we can provide only the image, mm -hmm. the raw data, mm -hmm. and we can provide both the raw data and the detection as I mentioned before, depends. And it, it goes to the, the discussion that we have with the OEMs, the tier ones, uh, each one, it's a case by case uh, issue. But the beauty is that we can provide both. But then, like, in order for them to rely on the classification that you provide, you have to agree on some sort of, like, on a standard, yes. right? Like, yeah. they, you have to speak in the same yeah, words. The, 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 the term is KPIs, so you need to agree of, of uh, performance indicators uh, that basically there is always a trade-off because the far you want the detection to be, the higher rate of uh, miss rate and false detection because the, the object is smaller. So there is a trade-off and every OEM got its own a calculation about this uh, trade-off. I also, I, I, I rather meant about like you send me data, you send me a raw image and then you're also sending me, it's a cat. But like I'm a smart car, I'm thinking like not in terms of cats and dogs, I'm thinking in terms of like a small uh, alive uh, hazard, right? Yeah. So and like this way I wouldn't be able to know what you're to saying. Collide so with, yeah. Are you working on that kind of uh, like establishing those standards? Do they exist already? We, maybe? We just started actually, because of the size of our company, start discussing with uh, policy makers and decision makers because we strongly believe that uh, 
uh, you know, our uh, statement is that other sky driven to save lives. And we believe that we can reduce with this technology, if it will be implemented, the number of casualties, pedestrians, uh, will be uh, reduced significantly. Uh, By, you have like an estimation? We or think, well, you know, when you look at the numbers currently, uh, unfortunately, there is a reduction of, of the number of uh, uh, casualties at the daytime. But nighttime and harsh weather, sunrise, unfortunately, uh, if you look at the numbers, it is very stable. And we believe that if this technology will be implemented, we will be able to reduce the numbers of casualties. So we are in discussion with policymakers and uh, with the insurance companies and, and, uh, other, co and uh, other organizations to learn more about our technology because it's, you know, it's like seat belts. When it was introduced first, people weren't aware that there is a seat belt or, or, or airbag a solution that can prevent people from dying because of accident. Once we introduce the technology and we show that we are very strong and robust solution in those scenarios, we think that it will be followed by regulations and it will uh, impact the OEMs to do the right thing in our view, which is to implement this solution as part of the sensor suite. Very interesting. Thank you. Uh, and if you're focusing on the autonomous, uh, how come Sky is part of the name <laughs> of the week? Uh, if you're focusing on the week, or the yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, first, uh, Sky in Hebrew is Shamaim. So Ad and Ad is Shemaim. all the way. Ad is all the way. So Ad the Sky is all the way to the Sky. sky. That's uh, one. Uh, but actually, the name is go goes from uh, Ad Adas, which is. Uh, the advanced driving assistance yes. system. And KY stands from the first in uh, the first company that invested in in our uh, uh, and this is a very large Japanese company. It's a Kyocera. It's a oh, very yeah. big listed Japanese company. We are very proud of this partnership. Uh, since then, we have some other uh, uh, shareholders, but uh, we are very proud of this partnership. Uh, and uh, that's how the K the name come. <laughs> so. Gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, so what's next for you? What's the next uh, big priority that you're working yeah. towards? So the beauty is that uh, currently uh, we are invested uh, uh, significantly in uh, level three and above. Uh, we you have mean autonomous, level, autonomous uh, providing autonomous a solution driving. for level two, so uh, three autonomous, which is uh, what level three? We're talking about Teslas. Uh, I, I don't uh, want to mention uh, company names. I mean, but we're talking about advanced driving assistance. Yeah. Assistance system exactly. sale, right? Yes. So yes. It's like the car that can park, uh, the car that can drive by itself on the highway. Yes. So we are focusing on that. We uh, we see there. Uh, um, um, uh, we see a lot of attraction from that uh, specific market. On top of that, we uh, we see uh, um, and we just uh, penetrate this uh, um, um, uh, vertical uh, segment, which is uh, smart cities, smart junctions, uh, and the ability to provide information to the, the junction so that they it will avoid collisions. The traffic, like talking exactly. to the traffic yeah. lights? Uh, basically replacing traffic lights at the end of the day. If you can buy, with our sensor, you can sense if a car is coming or a pedestrian is coming from this direction, and you can provide the information to a car that is going on the other direction, and then to alert that there is something coming just behind the corner or something like that. So that's, that's the level idea. three already? It's like uh, this is something that now? we are. This is something that we are now in... Uh, in discussion, even more than discussion with several uh, potential customers. And, um, and on top of that, uh, we see the, the mobility as a service, uh, autonomous taxi and others, uh, solution for uh, mobility on demand, etc. We see our technology and we have some uh, um, initiatives in that scenario as well. So the beauty is that we see currently a lot of uh, attraction. Um, and and uh, we feel that we are positioned very well currently. That okay. sounds really amazing. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for being here. Good Thank luck you to much. you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, yes, if there's like a last word or a piece of wisdom that you'd like to share, <laughs> you're welcome. I'm a strong believer of the autonomous driving uh, revolution. 
And I think that uh, <coughs> it reached a point where it's, uh, it must be safety first. In order to introduce a mass autonomous driving solution, you, we need to uh, have more uh, technologies, sensing technologies that will provide not just those solutions for the use cases that uh, I just mentioned before, but also some redundancy because sensing technology become a safety feature. It's like the brakes in the car. And there you, you cannot rely on one sensing technology. Again, this is an issue that goes to policymakers, etc. And I'm, uh, I believe it will happen. It's not a question of when. It's not a question of if it will happen, it's a question of when. And I think that with our solution, it will be way closer than we think. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you very much.